All right, welcome to the lowdown brought to you by Unibet. I'm Dev Sarney and joining me today is the unbeaten, the one and only Tommy TNT Fury. Tommy, <coughs> how are you? Um, I've, had, I've, had, I've had better days, uh, don't get me wrong, but I'm here, I'm still breathing. Um, it's Christmas time, so you know, we've got a lot to be thankful for. <coughs> And how, how's the rib and the cough? Even now, I can I can see the coughs coming through. You're sort of coughing on the yeah. on the intro. Like, how, how are you? Um, I'm I'm not good to be honest with you. Um, you know, I've not I've not been on social media since I posted the the um, the video. You know, online of me obviously coming out and ex, you know explaining why the fight's off. Um, I've not posted anything on social media. I've not even been on social media because I'm just not interested in it. Because to be honest with you, I've been in probably the lowest point that I've ever been in my entire life. I've never felt or experienced anything so low because imagine having everything that you could have ever dreamt for and then having it ripped away from you by no fault of your own. Mm. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a bit of a pill to swallow because the chest was one thing and it's terrible, like you've heard before you even started this interview, but having a rib break then, that, I just, that was just the ice on the cake. And um, even now, I don't think I've, you know, fully swallowed, you know, swallowed that pill. Um, and I don't think I will because it was such a massive, you know, easy night for me um, when we get down to it. And you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll explain later on if you've seen the fight, how much of an easy night that would have been for me. Well, let's jump straight <laughs> into that then. Let's talk about it. Jake Paul just knocked out <laughs> Tyron Woodley in their rematch in, in the sixth round. You've watched it. What did you think? So, I mean, I think it's a pretty bad place that you're in when the commentators who's commentate your fight says it's getting pretty hard to watch now and you know that joking between the commentators or oh, who won that round well nobody you know and that went on for you know more, well more than half the fight um, and I was just watching it and it was very upsetting for me to sit there and watch it I'm not going to beat around the bush it was because I know if I'd have been in there he wouldn't have it wouldn't have been going no six seven rounds or whatever it was it wouldn't have been going there because for the first four or five rounds the guy didn't throw a punch he didn't throw anything. Like, it was just wrestling each other. Um, so, for me to sit there and watch that, you know, and that was meant to be my night. That was meant to be my time. Uh, you know, you get everyone talking shit back and forth about, oh, yeah, he's done this, he's done that. But, you know, the, the people that know me know, you know, how much of a bitter pill that was. Um, they know what I've been going through. Um, and that's it. And it was hard to watch because that should have been me in Tampa Bay, Florida, you know, in front of the thousands of people packed out arena. You know, live all across the world. That should be me, and it will be me. And I do believe my time will come. You know, me, Frank, and you know you, yourselves. We're trying to figure out the next date for us. Uh, we're trying to get that fight rescheduled because that's the fight that I want next. And you know, seeing after the fight as well, and calling out all these MMA people like, what? I don't get what he's trying to achieve by calling out UFC people. He wants to be a boxer, doesn't he? So fight a boxer. Stop calling out all these wrestlers and non-boxers because. With, in, in a cage, they kill him any day of the week. But let's be honest and let's be serious. Here. He, would he beat Nate Diaz 100%? Would he beat any other MMA super fighter 100%? Because they're not boxers. And I've really got nothing else I have to say on that because I'm not even entertaining that. He's the fight that won next and he's the fight that's going to happen next. So we'll just start the stages working out. Did you see <laughs> anything in that fight, in those six rounds, and indeed the knockout punch, that you're wary of? Anything that surprised you? Is he better than you thought? No. Um, God's honest truth. I was saying to the people that I watched the fight with, I said that he looked better in his last fight with Woodley. You know, he looked better in his last fight because this fight, he he didn't do anything, Dev. Like, when we watched that fight, for the first five rounds, it was literally a hugging affair. They didn't do anything, like, did anything at all. Um, he didn't show me anything, you know. He doesn't move his head. I've said that all along. And I've said this all along as well, and it goes for myself. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not here. The only way you get better at being a fighter and a boxer is the amount of ring time you have and the amount of fights you have. I've trained all my life in the gym, but I'm not, you know, I'm training the gym and fighting in the ring is two different things. And he's got to learn that and he is learning that. You know, he can't just keep, you can't just go and train and have a million spars and think you could be the world champion. It's not. You only get better by fighting. And he's had four fights, five fights, whatever he's had. And that's just it. Well, he said that you were lucky that it wasn't you that was in there. He said that Tyron is way tougher and he's got the experience and you would have looked a lot worse than that. Um, I assume you've heard those comments. What, what, what do you think of that? I think he was very lucky that it wasn't me in there. 
you know, instead of Tyro Mudley. Because if it was me in there, it well, like I said, Dev, I honestly believe, yeah. There is, I'm trying to I'm trying to give him a bit more credit, but I just can't. If that was me in the ring on Saturday night, it wouldn't have got out the opening bell. Because let's have it right. Put that first round, watch that first round, and then watch the first round of me, my first fight back coming out of Love Island. Is he any better than that guy? No, he's not. The guy that fought coming out of Love Island had 30 professional boxing bouts and it was a world kickboxing champion, be it what he is. But that's what I'd have done to him because people who come out and don't do anything, they get put to sleep. And Jake Paul come out and didn't do anything. And if you watched my first round coming out of Love Island, watch Jake Paul's first round, what I'd done to that man is exactly what I would have done to Jake Paul on Saturday night because he come out, he didn't do anything. I'd have, I'd, have, I'd have been smashing the jabs out there. He doesn't move his head. And then I fold up in the right hands and he just wouldn't have been there. He just wouldn't have been there because it was that bad. It was a bad, terrible fight. Terrible. If it wasn't for the knockout, I think everybody's forgot the first five rounds anyway. You know, everybody's completely forgot about that and just going straight to the knockout. Yeah, be it what it was. It was it was a nice punch, yeah, but what, what do you expect of a 14-stone guy when you put your hands down? What do you expect? You know, let's have it real. And let's be honest, Tyron Woodley wasn't in a full training camp because he, I, I pulled out the fight quite close to it. So he wouldn't have had that much notice. So if that's Jake Paul training for months and months and months to fight me, fucking hell, jeez. It's going to be an easy night, isn't it, when it happens? Well, look, the vibe in that fight, in that rematch, was a bit different. <laughs> I saw that Jake had bought a, a Rolex for Tyron as well. They, It seemed a different sort of vibe. What did you make of it? I just thought, you know... I said it all along with Jake Paul when he fights the Circus Act. You know, he's buying he's buying him Rolex watches, he's doing this, doing that. That ain't no form of champion. Like, what, what's that? Like, when I'm there, I'll come to fight. And believe you, if he offered me a Rolex, I'd throw it back in his face. I don't want anything he's got for me. I don't want nothing off him. The only thing I want from him is to get in the ring. That's it. You know, the, all that nicey, nicey stuff before a fight. What's that about? I understand his mutual respect there, but let's have it right. Win the fight game. And you know, 24 hours from when he got given the watch and all that nice stuff, they're going to get in the ring and not lump out of each other. You know, I understand the mutual respect, but presents and gifts and all that sort of shit, come on, what's that? It's a fight game, is it not? So he seems to be sort of toying with the idea of fighting you or not fighting you. Uh, what, what do you think is going to happen? Do you expect him to fight you? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what's really shown me a lot is, you know, Jake Paul comes across as this guy who holds all the cards. He doesn't hold any cards. I'm not some bum who's fucking. <sighs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like I'm, he, he thinks. He thinks that I'm. I'm in desperate need of money. That I. That I've not got a life other than Jake Paul. And if Jake Paul doesn't fight me, my life doesn't go on. But without Jake Paul, I live a nice, comfortable life, and I can say that quite comfortably. I don't need Jake Paul. When he started mentioning me, I said the first time, "Let's get. Let's get in the ring. Let's do it. Let's have it for real." And that's still. That's still this here. You know, I want Jake Paul in the ring because I want to stop all this. And that's the reason he keeps making out, oh, I'm going to fight him, I'm not going to fight him. Da, 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 da. When, when I pulled out this fight, Jake Paul couldn't believe his luck. I bet he had his little celebration party. And I'm being deadly serious because when I pulled out this fight, that was Christmas come early for him. And that's why it's so upsetting for me. And that's why I've been so, so in a dark place because it was through no fault of my own. The chest was a chest. You can hear how bad I'm sounding now. Mm -hmm. I was going to fight through this. I was going to take the fight through this. But when the rib got snapped, that was obviously, like I said to you before, the icing on the cake. And it's just upsetting because this all could have been over and done with now. Jake Paul could have been over and done with. Because believe you me, if that was me in there on Saturday, it would have been, regardless of the bacterial chest infection or not. You know, if, if this rib wasn't a, the main factor, I'd have been in that ring and it'd have been dealt with in a couple of rounds and this would have been all over. You know, but it's upsetting that it's, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> what did you make of the trolling? I mean, there was a few things that he did. At the way in, he wore a T-shirt uh, which said, Tommy, this could have been you, pointing at, at Tyron. Uh, he wore a Union Jack kind of suit to the ring and it had a little message on it about you watching it on TV. Again, this could have been you kind of thing. What did you make of all of that? Um, it's to be expected. You know, it's to be expected because he's a prankster. You know, he's a, he's a, show, he's a showman, isn't he? So I, I expected all that, but I didn't think anything of it at all. Nothing at all. You know, there's nothing that man that I think of. You know, I don't study Jake Paul. I don't, I'm not interested in him. The only thing that I want to hear about is when this next fight is rescheduled. That's the only thing I want to hear. 
get me and him in the ring because we've got unfinished business. And I do believe, you know, see all these things on social media, who should he fight next? Who should he fight next? So we're all saying fight a proper boxer. Fight Tommy Fury. And yeah, being at what? A very unlucky thing happened. A very unlucky thing happened. But there's no reason why this fight can't be rescheduled for early 2022. You know, and that's just happening in a lot of it. You know, I'm doing everything I can in my power to recover. But, you know, next year I'm ready to go. You know, I'm ready, I'm ready to put this thing to bed. Yeah, OK. Well, let, let's talk about the, the problems that you had then. Obviously, it's desperately unlucky. Um, your promoter, Frank Warren, actually reacted to Jake's uh, comment about it being lucky that you weren't in there. And he said the same thing about actually you were very, very unlucky that you weren't in there. Um, when did you realise that there was a problem? It all started, you know. Two weeks of camp went perfect, unbelievable. Best camp, best camp I've had up to date. I felt unbelievable in all my sessions. I was firing all cylinders. Third week comes on, I start feeling a bit, you know, I'm coughing. Um, and I'm running out, I'm getting me sprints, and I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm training. I'm coughing more and more. A couple of days go by, same thing's happening. But I'm coughing up a lot of phlegm this time, like, like pure phlegm. So I think, hmm, what's going on here? So I just let it go and go and go. And I, and I just thought, it's just one of them things. It's December, we're in England. I'm training in Morecambe near the sea. It's just a bit of a cough or whatever like that. But then it started to get really bad. Like I was coughing up all through the night, all through the gym. You know, I couldn't hit the pads without saying, Dad, hold on a minute. It's ice smell in a minute. I'm coughing my guts up and spitting it in the bucket that's out of the room. And that's when I knew that. I thought, right, that's, this is no good. There's something wrong. So we went to the doctors. <laughs> I didn't take a genius to work out. You know, they diagnosed me with a bacterial chest infection. And, you know, a, a bad one because bacteria is one of the worst you can get. Um, you know, and that was that. And I thought to myself, listen, it's not going to get in the way of anything. You know, I'll fight through this. I'm not bothered. And then, um, but the, my body was getting weaker and weaker by the day because of the infection. And my levels going right down because my immune system was shot. Um, you know, I decided to have a little spa and nothing much, nothing major or anything like that. Just purely because my body was that low in energy and low in everything. I took a little clip and bang, instantly knew. That what well, that didn't feel that didn't feel right, and then I took the gloves off straight away, jumped in the car straight to the MRI. I was I was in the tunnel uh, for about uh, I think it was about an hour and forty five minutes in there just still, and they took me out. And the doctor said straight to me, they said, "Listen, I've been doing this for twenty years. If I'm looking at it, that's broke. It's a fracture. Like you, you broke your rib, mm -hmm. but I'm going to send it off to the you know professionals, and they'll tell you yourselves." Within an hour, I had all the paperwork and everything back what it was. Um, you know, and that was really the start of, you know, the low points, you know, me, my dad, Tyson, the whole team, right, what are we going to do here? And I was like, oh, no, it'll be fine enough, so I'll take them up, we'll stop sparring. And it literally took my dad, <laughs> Tyson, and the doctor that was there with us to say, listen, you've got a broken rib, like you can't fight. And another, and, and a doctor actually said, I watched a video on YouTube, um, you know, if I would have thought that could have led to a point like a, perforated lung or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know the exact term for it, but that's life-threatening. So, you know, I understand even now the way I, the way I feel now, I understand that I couldn't have been in that ring on the 18th. On the 18th. There's no point having an ad fight with an idiot when you can knock him out in seconds on top form. You know, and that's, and that's just it. That's what we came down to. So there's not really, you know, anything about that. You can't fight with a broken rib. And that's just mm -hmm. what it is. So now I've put my mindset in, okay, let's get this fight rescheduled because there's no other fight that I want out there. This is the fight that I want next. And this is what needs to happen. It needs to get rescheduled. So I'm leaving up to Frank Warren, you know, and Jake Paul's team and Showtime to, in order to get this fight back on because it is a huge fight. You know, all the build up saying Tyrone Woodley saying, oh, who was interested in that fight? A lot more people was interested in that fight than it was in yours. You know, and I can guarantee that if you looked at the ratings of that second fight and when we do fight, put the ratings together, it'll show then how much interest this fight's got. And believe you me, if this fight didn't have interest, Jake Paul wouldn't even mention it. You know, he wouldn't. This is, in your pro career, and obviously I've followed it since the start, this feels like the first bit of real adversity that you're facing. Um, how have you dealt with this? As you've said, this, is, this has been quite a dark period for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's not been good, you know, because, you know, everybody, you know, all of that is terrible messages. You know, if, if I was one of them people that was, you know, offended, you know, quite badly with what people say, then I've, pretty, I've been in a very low place at the minute. But I don't care what anybody thinks about me, only my family, my girlfriend, people that impact my life, you know, people that, you know, make a difference in my life. But going on social media and stuff like that, every every, every single message, my, my messages are terrible, terrible messages. 
I've not, I don't think I've had one good message ever. Um, going out in public, I went to the, I, I think I went to the, where did I go? I went to the corner shop for some water, like for some water to fill the fridge up. <coughs> what did I get that same thing there? Oh, you pussy, this and that. You know, so that, that, yeah, 100%, that's what I've had. Mm. You know, everyone's sort of done a 360 on me. Um, but don't get me wrong, there are some loyal fans out there. there. There are some nice fans that have been with me and understand what I'm going through. Um, but, you know, that that's kind of what it is, you know. But, the, the, you know, some of the public can be so fickle, you know. One minute they hate you, one minute they love you. That's just the way it is. But when I, when I get back to fully fit and I destroy this guy, when we do come in the ring, they'll all be coming back. Nice messages, deleting the old bad ones. That's just the way it goes in this life. So you can't think too much of it. It's just, I'm not really thinking about at all the public. It's just setting a low point for me and myself, just coming together with what's actually happened. Um, because imagine yourself, uh, you know, a young boxer having a chance to headline in Tampa Bay in front of thousands. You know, anybody's going to be low, anybody. And I know this, I know this thing's worth, you know, there's children out there dying with cancer. I'm not disputing that. I've got nothing to moan about when we look at it in that text, but I'm just saying, you know, it's not the easiest thing to go through, especially being the first bit of adversity, like you say, to go through in your career. Well, look, you've got uh, you've got a great role model in Tyson, who's who's had seen the highest highs and the lowest lows. What what sort of advice <laughs> um, has he given you as he sort of put his arm around your shoulder and helped you through it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to be honest with you, I really um, I really shut myself off um, from a lot of people. Um, you know, the only people that I've been around is obviously myself and Molly. You know, that's it. Um, because I've not I've not been left. I've not been leaving the house. Um, didn't want to leave the house, didn't want to do anything because I've been training so hard. I thought, you know, why, how, why is this happened? Why now? You know, it couldn't, it couldn't have happened two fights ago when I was fighting in London or something, but couldn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's had to come when, when you know, when the big events come, it had to come. And it's just that it's, you know, it's a hard pill to swallow. But like I say, positive thinking, you know, and that's, that's what we're going to get through. So I've really just gone through that dark time by myself. You know, I've gone through all that and pulled myself out the other side because feel like you just need that alone time sometimes, you know, to really gather your thoughts because everyone can pat you on the back and say, oh, yeah, you're doing, you know, you're all right. You got this, you got that. But nobody actually feels, you know, what, understands what you're going through. And it wasn't the money. It wasn't anything to do with that side. It was the fact. It was just of the sweet sights of boxing, you know, the walkout, the fans in the arena, the actual fight. It, that, that was all I wanted to do. You know, I, I replayed it over my head so many times for that, for them weeks that I was training. <laughs> I was relaying it over and over again <coughs> and that was the only thing I was focusing on you know and, that, and that's it you know but we're just going to have to focus on it for next year and that's just you know where we're up to So what happens next then when when do you start training again obviously yeah, it doesn't sound like it's going to be tomorrow because you're still you're still coughing, still coughing a lot but in your head where, when, when do you start again? Yeah. Um, I think the doctor advised me you know 12 weeks out um, with the rib um, but I, I don't intend, on, you know, on doing nothing for 12 weeks at all. You know, I've done nothing for two weeks now and I feel like ripping my own head off. Um, I just feel like, you know, I'm going to get Christmas out of the way. I'm going to get New Year out of the way and uh, whatever I can start doing, you know, from after New Year, what I can, whatever I can do that my body allows me to do where I'm not in pain, I'll be doing. Um, you know, basically, I'll just be doing anything possibly anything possible to speed up this recovery process because the quicker it, you know, speeds up and gets better, the quicker I can get in that ring and get this fight done. Um, so, you know, I, I get Christmas and New Year out of the way and then I'll be, I'll be, do, I'll be looking to do some form of exercise. I don't know what it's going to be yet because I'm not tempted to do anything. Um, but we'll see when we cross that bridge. Will it be Big John training you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll be the same team. Like I say, you know, Tyson, my dad, you know, everybody that's close to me around me that, you know, they'll all be there because if there's all for the last one, they've seen highs and lows and, you know, we're still going to be the same team. So we're going to go out there, we're going to train, and we're going to do what should have been done, you know, Saturday night, which is uh, going to be next year, 2022. I just want you to confirm one thing. Obviously, you know, when you're pull, pulling out with a broken rib and the, uh, the <laughs> infection, the video that was going around on social media was obviously Tyson standing over over you with the medicine ball bang 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 yeah. on your rib so can you confirm that was not what broke your rib yes i can confirm i've seen the video as well man. no that there what you've seen that's been done to me all my life every single training session i can take that and 10 times more of it that was not what done the rib so everybody out there looking at the video saying oh this is how it's done it's not believe you me it's not 
<laughs> and if we've got a message for Jake Paul, who I'm sure is watching this, what have you got to say to Jake, Tommy? My message to Mr. Paul is what's happened is very unfortunate. You know, I can understand he's going to be angry. You know, he's gone through training camps, expenses, but I'm angry also. And we've got a lot of unfinished business. And I think we need to get this year out of the way, call us a write off. You enjoy time off. And I think we'll meet up in 2022. We'll get this fight done and get this unfinished business out of the way. Everybody wants to see this fight. You want to proclaim yourself as a boxer. Stop calling out the UFC people. Come and fight me like we was going to. Yeah, what, what happened was unfair. My fault, my part, hold my hands up. What can I do? Ungodly things happen. But next year, let's get it done bright and early. Let's get back in training. Let's give this whole world the fight that they want to see. Let's see if you're the real boxer or not. Because you're getting all this, you're getting all that, but you've never fought a boxer before and you still haven't. Let's get this fight on. Let's get this fight done. I'll be ready to go in March. So I'll see you then. Let's get the teams on it and let's get it done. I think that closes it off, Tommy. I think we've uh, we've covered everything. Thanks so much. Unless there's so. something you want to add? Nope. Just uh, Merry Christmas, everybody, and Happy New Year. Um, sorry again. What's happened happened is unfortunate, but I'm sure I'll give you all that great fight next year. Some sort of forward to. All right. Look, we're all looking forward to it, Tommy. Thanks so much for joining me, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Cheers, Dev. Merry Christmas.